on the side. I just want you to know something. Oh. <laughs> How lame was that? Yeah. How lame. Unbelievable. Thankfully, the rest of tonight's show is top notch. So without further ado, let's meet tonight's panel. My first guest is known to many a Big Brother follower as a straight talking former bad boy who swapped the LA life for the Big Brother house. It's last year's runner up and all round lovely guy, Adam Kelly. <laughs> The Jersey girl who combines the body of Kylie Minogue with the voice of Deirdre Barlow. <laughs> she is my kind of woman. It's Lauren Carr. <laughs> and completing our lineup is the actor who, despite achieving success on both screen and stage, is still associated with a role he played over nine years ago. But on this show, we like to celebrate that here and now. So please give it up. For Barry from East oh, 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 oh. I meant to say John Williams. Oh, oh, oh. um, okay, so Big Brother has gone and done it again. Yet another massive twist in store on Friday. Um, you are going to have the chance to put one couple into the safe house this Friday and they'll have immunity from next week's nominations. They'll live in a life of luxury ah. and they'll be able to spy on the house. Uh, so either Dan and Wolfie or Dexter and Gina will be going in. Sean, what do you think about the twist? I think it's great. I think anything that puts a rocket up their arse is good. Um, <laughs> It does, it keeps them on their toes. I it's think... not like they haven't had numerous rockets up their arses well, for the past three weeks. Guess though. what? <laughs> the, the show was called That's Secrets and really Lies, folks. Exactly. What, did they, what did they expect when they signed on? And I think they're a strangely... Uh, it's a good show, but I think they're a strangely unlovable lot. Not like yours. Really? Oh, thanks. Yeah, I do, in a way. <laughs> and, and I think it's a cross between the Adams Family, the Osbournes <laughs> and Geordie Shaw, really. <laughs> do, you think, do you think that's because they are... Quite strong individually. Do you know what I mean? There, there are no. Yes, I, I, I don't think I, I don't dislike them individually. Just as a group. So I think <laughs> I just I, th I just think any anything like this that's going to just 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 get it all going again and, and wind them all up is great. Just mess with them yeah. just a little bit. Secrets more. and lies, baby. Uh, Lauren, do you think it's right to introduce something like this? Relatively early on, we're, we're it's not even well. It's three weeks tomorrow mm -hmm. since it started, and it, it's quite early to introduce Secret House. Do you think? Yeah, I I think it's too early. Possibly, you know, they're still getting over. Is there an actor? Isn't there an actor in the house? Um, they haven't been together to form groups yet, and I think with groups formed and then stick two people in a secret house, I think you get more out of that. But it's a good twist. And do you think they are going to form groups though? Because we th there is vague groups. But they argue, they get over it, they're friends again, and I, then something else happens. No I way. think the group share, you've got your, your mean girls, I'm coining them, Dan and Hazel, and they're going to start their own group, and then you're going to have everyone else. I know, but then Dan and Hazel tonight, Hazel's... Looks like, well, we're gonna, let's not talk about that now. We're going to talk about that later on. I can't, I can't ruin the next debate. What do you lot think? It's really fabulous. I just dropped it. Uh, oh, you're even jumping out your chair. Oh, yeah, always, always, Emma. Um, I actually disagree with Lauren. I actually think... Hi, Paul! Uh, how are you? Hi. No, I'll tell you what. It's only three weeks in. But so much has happened. I know. It's perfect timing. And, of course, it's got to be Dexter and Gina. Who go yeah. into the house? Really? Oh, you're saying no? No, I think the other two will eat each other. It'll be fabulous. <laughs> They'll kill Wolves each other. Do like me. Uh, right. What does everybody else think of the <laughs> twist? And... I have to go in because it'll be so so entertaining. Dan and Wolfie, because it could be quite uncomfortable. Oh yeah, it'll be... Dan's a detective because he's going to see like the secret footage and that when he comes in, he's going to use it against them so mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Did you just say totals? Totals. Totals. Uh, okay, so Wolfie and Dan have. Um, They've, they've, they've had tough times together, haven't they? So, um, Adam, will they form a friendship together, do you think, if they go in there together? Wolfie and Dan? Yeah. Friends. <laughs> I think it's quite obvious. Probably not, no. I mean... Do you not think, though, if they're stuck together in one room for a substantial amount of time... So, how many questions is called interrogation? You know, so, <laughs> hey, Wolfie, how are you doing today? Oh, are you hungry? And then he's interrogating me. I feel like a victim. He's do, you, do you think he interrogates her? You know what, like... No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, there's nothing that Dan's ever done what makes me think he's a cop anyway. Could you imagine that guy arresting you? <laughs> Frolicking around like you're arrested today. Like, no. There's nothing, there's nothing of Dan that reminds me of a cop or a detective. And you know what? I've never met a straight cop in my life. Pardon the pun, sorry. But there's just... 
There's something about him that doesn't show that he's a detective or a cop. It doesn't make any sense to me, anyway. So maybe he's just inquisitive. Oh. Or an actor. Oh, oh don't yeah, stop you that one. Yeah, no. um, we to have the seen ball. him this week. He's, he's kind of slightly become a little bit unhinged, I think. Um, could he hack doing time, do you think, Sean, in the... In the uh... Well, if, if she doesn't give him a cigarette... <laughs> Can you imagine it? <laughs> if she just starves him with cigarettes the whole time in there, <laughs> do it'll, it. It'll, it'll just eat her. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen, because then his boyfriend will be really sad, and his boyfriend oh. is on the phone right now. Oh, sad face. Matt, are you there? Matt? Oh, Matt, please be there. Matt, are you there? No. Matt, are you there? Can't speak after that black hour. Matt's not there, everybody. Oh. Let's just give him a oh. round of applause anyway. Another example of a boyfriend. Um, okay, so going back to what I said we were going to talk about in a little while, we're at that point now. Um, so he was quite disappointed tonight uh, with Hazel because I think he kind of feels like he slightly ditched her a little bit. Uh, do you think that he can trust her? I don't think you can trust anyone in the house, can you? As, as far as you can throw them, really. You know, at the end of the day, they, they know what they're getting into and if, 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 if he puts his trust in someone and it's not reciprocated, it's his own fault, really, if he doesn't get it back. Uh, Lauren, would you like to see him going to the safe house? A little bit, if he was with Wilfie, because it's just going to go mental. And the whole cigarette thing, I'd love her to go in and just say, no, you're not having any. <laughs> go away. Do go one. away. Yeah. Do you think they can flourish? Can they, as people, oh, as a partnership, as characters in the house, can they flourish if they go no to the safe way. house? Yes, Daniel? Do you know, if Wolfie goes in with Dan, they have to be friends. If you're stuck in for a situation for one week, you have to start to be friends. You have to talk about things. And when they come out, they'll be on top of the house. They so they'll have something the house won't have. They do seem like the kind of people that can talk about things and try and rationalise things then as again, well, aren't Wolfie they? Wolfie will just have a go at everything. If she's having a go at so many things. I don't think Dan's in the wrong too much. Is that just paranoia, though, because of yeah. what's... Shall yeah. I just sit here with Daniel and just take yeah. yeah. about no. things? Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave you because I'm really no, hoping no. that uh, Dan's boyfriend, Matt, is on the phone now. Are you there, Matt? Yes, I'm Yay! there. I was just speaking to the TV at one point. Oh, sorry? I was just speaking to the telly, so I'm here, I'm here! Yeah. <laughs> OK, now, uh, Matt, I keep having to remember your name, and I think it's the same as my husband, so I can't forget that. Um, are you surprised with how he's getting on this week? Um, I'm not really surprised, no, because I knew this would affect him, because he's quite insecure as a person, so I knew that him being up for nominations, that, that would affect him and the way he would act in the house. OK. So I wasn't really surprised. And what do you think about Cigarette Gate? Well, that surprised me, because before he went in, he had stopped smoking. He'd stopped smoking in all, um, oh. July. Oh. So he's, um, he stopped smoking in January, and then he took the cigarettes thinking, oh, you know, I might start smoking, but I'll take them in for the other housemates, which he did do, because in the first week he didn't have a cigarette. Yeah. So he did give Wolfie cigarettes, and then she's saying that he only gave him two, so I don't know, but... I'm not quite happy that he started smoking, but... OK, and did you watch the live show, uh, the, yes. the main show, sorry, just yeah. when we were live uh, in the diary room? Why do you think he was so quiet in there? I don't know. I think it's all getting to him. I think because he, he knew that it was live and Wolfie... What was Wolfie's question? That... Uh, uh, they, they asked Dan about why he was being so bitchy about Wolfie because of the cigarettes. Yeah, I think he doesn't like being called bitchy. And that yeah, really he has said that him. a few times, hasn't he? Yeah, because he's not bitchy at all. Like, I've been with him for three years and he wouldn't say a bad thing about anyone. But in there, I mean, I don't think he's bitching about people. He's saying it to them, but he's also saying it behind their back. Well, but I think, I I think that's the thing, isn't it? People say, oh, they're bitching, they're bitching. They're in a, a, a confined space chatting and they're going to have conversations yeah. about themselves and other people and all of that. Yeah. And, you know, bitching has become something else. Um, very quickly, would you like to see him go into the safe house? Yes, I would. I'd love it. Why? Because... It, obviously, he's not getting on with Wolfie that much. So when they go in, Dan will, like, I think he'll become friends with her because he's not a horrible person. He's okay. only doing that because he thinks that she's an actor. And I think that when they go in the house, they'll, I think they'll have this relationship. And I think it'll be good because when he goes back into the house, he won't be scared to say anything to the other housemate. So okay. I think he should go in. OK, Matt, thanks so much. Thanks. I'm glad we finally got you, Matt, everybody. <laughs> OK, uh, let's quickly talk about uh, Dexter and Gina, who are the other duo that might be going in. They have been plotting quite a bit together over the last week. Um, 
Uh, will they enjoy the benefit of immunity, do you think, Adam, the most out of both of the pairings? Yeah, I think both of them will. I mean, getting put up every week has got to be like a damper on your style, you know what I'm saying? It would get kind of annoying. So if they got immune and got to put somebody else up, I think it'd be great. And I think in return, Dexter needs to put up Daly because Daly pissed me off by nominating him. <laughs> Piss me off. That's really? messed up. Just imagine if I nominated Lauren or Luke because everybody in the house was like, oh, I'm tired of them, I'm tired of them. And you're saying you're my friend? There's no, the biggest thing in this house is no loyalty. No, mm. not a single piece of loyalty. Should we throw Adam back in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mix uh, it up. What do you like think, uh, Dexter and Gina? Oh, oh, you, oh you, you sat there. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. no, that's, no I don't, you don't want them in the safe house? I don't want them in there because that will give them power. And with Dexter with power, as soon as he gets it, he thinks that's it. He rules. So, like, in a way, it probably I could like be quite good, but no, I don't like him. That's so. like what Wolfie said the other yeah. night about the tennis ball. You love having it because you love having the power over everybody. Uh, thank you all very much. That was wonderful and thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, join me after the break for loads thoroughly. more house gossip, right. plus everyone's favourite body language right. expert, right. Judy oh. James, is back oh, for no. some hardcore very analysis. But first... The power is in your hands to decide which couple will enter the Big Brother safe house this Friday. Who goes in? You decide. This week there is no eviction. Instead, you can choose to send one pair of housemates to the safe house. This will also make them immune from next week's eviction. To send Dan and Wolfie to the safe house from a landline call 090 2050 58 15 or from a mobile 650 58 15. To send Dexter and Gina to the safe house from a landline call 090 2050 58 16 or from a mobile 650 58 16. Mobile and BT landline votes cost 35p. Other landlines may vary. Voting closes in Friday's live show. Votes cast after the lines close won't count. For full terms, go to channel5.com forward slash bbvote. <laughs> Welcome back to Bit on the Side. Now, complete this sentence. Bit on the Side has been a big blank this year. No, S. Piss off. You shouldn't be on the end. Go away. There you go, it's been a big hit. Yeah. Oh, enough with the jazz hands. Uh, OK, so I've hosted 189 of these bad boys now, and although... Thank you, thank you very much. And although the quality of the gags may have slightly declined, the one thing that has remained intact are our exclusives. Would you like proof? Oh, yeah. Here's another. That was fucking wicked, man. So, what? That you said that all in front of her. In yeah, the diary room. But I've said it all to her. Yeah. I say it all to her. Like, but what was interesting is everyone was so, Wolfie and Dexter especially, were so over the top. Yeah. All that B and all that B. It's just too over the top. It made me feel uncomfortable because when I go up there, I'm just talk normally, whereas they're like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. And it was annoying me. Well, that's good. But, uh, th that, especially for me as well, because I don't really. Because I'm not a smoker as well, I don't know what goes on yeah. with things to do with the smokers and stuff. Yeah. So, when you're saying that she told you one day that... She had a muscle last for a week. A, a day. A day, but and then, yeah. but now it's lasted a week. Yeah. Something not right with it, though. Oh, there's something not right with it. He's always second-guessing. Uh, OK, now, you would think, being three weeks into Big Brother, it would be fair to say, we know our housemates quite well, right? Yeah! Absolutely not. Uh, there's a whole world of uncharted psychological territory that we haven't even scratched the surface of. But despair not, because we have enlisted one of the best in the business to help us delve that a little bit deeper. Please welcome body language expert and brilliant human being, Judy James! <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Where do we start? Uh, Let's start with a twist. I think it was... OK, so what effect will living in the house, uh, in, in the safe house, have on, uh, firstly, the pair that go in there, or and then, secondly, the rest of the house? And just to clarify, <laughs> sorry, because some people online, I think, are getting quite confused that they pick which two they want in, but they're already in pairs, so the two with the most votes, which are Dexter and Gina, they're a pair, and the two with the least votes... Uh, which were Wolfie and Dan, they're a pair. So you pick one or the other just to straighten that all out. Anyway, what effect is it going to have? I, I need a crash car. I mean, this is too exciting, isn't I it, really? Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's obviously going to be throwing a bomb into the whole thing. It depends who goes in there. Um, I think Dexter 
and Gina, they're very resilient. They're a bit like the cockroaches of the house. I think they've had it all thrown at them they've already. They've got thick skins, They've they? got rhino skins, whereas the really paper-thin skin too, um, who, what should we call them, Wan, the new power couple, <laughs> Wan, um, they're, they're, I think, you'll get a better reaction. <laughs> Listening to the housemates, I think they'll be a lot more sensitive to any uh, criticisms and So would comments. you prefer to see Wolfie and Dan go in there? In, is in... it not slightly more worrying for their minds if it is them two? Yes, and yes to both. But... <laughs> <laughs> and that this makes me sound... But I'm a nice person. <laughs> um, and also, you've got the tension between the two of them, and I think they will resolve that. But whether they both come out alive or not, I don't know from that fight. But I think... It would actually be more dangerous if you have Wolfie on one side and Dan inside so they could hear one another criticising one another. I think Wolfie would be going through the wall, actually, if she heard Dan being rude while she was watching him. So, so then that leads me on to my next question. Do you think that um, the right pairings have been picked, the two with the most votes against the two with the least votes? Um, yes. I mean, I think any combination would work. I think if I was going to be truly, truly horrible, as I say, Wolfie in the safe house listening to Dan possibly being rude about her would be very interesting. But uh, I'm happy if those two go in. OK. I think it should be fun. Um, this is the first time we've seen Wolfie and Dan up for eviction. Yes. Uh, and they're both quite surprised, aren't they? Why do you think they are becoming so unpopular? Um, I mean, Wolfie, I mean, last week, what was she, mother of flies? She's mother of flies and fags this week, isn't she? She's using fag barter. And I love the way she uses this fag as well. She looks like some kind of 70s stand-up comedian, doesn't she? Actually using them as a trophy. She's really emotionally all over the place. I love all the things that you notice. <laughs> I, I, isn't it amazing? <laughs> but I, I, she's, she's actually using two of the worst emotions at the moment. I, I mean, she's marinating in self-pity. I mean, it's horrible to watch. And that never comes out well. But also then suddenly we get this very arrogant, I'm going to win, very aggressive. So we've got this very passive, compliant, needy, and suddenly this tough warrior. And I think the two, neither of them are good, really. Well, it's, it's, it's quite conflicting, isn't it? Because I, I, kind of, I see her as this kind of really strong woman who's kind of gone in there very strong and has been quite opinionated and strong. And then we see this quite vulnerable side. So where, where do you think the boasting has come from? You know, the kind of... I ain't going nowhere and I'm going to win. Well, I, I think she's just tried to reboot. She's probably spoken to herself. I mean, you saw her in the diary room tonight. Suddenly she was that, I think, the Wolfie that we expected her to be. Yeah. Um, but I think she's got fag power, you know. It's like she's the one that's dishing them out. And I think she just so much wants to be that. But I, it's just... It's both an act. Neither, and she's also using projection as well. If you notice, when she criticises anybody, it's usually about things that she's done. So I think she's not got a very high self-awareness. OK. Uh, let's move on to Dan. You've chosen a clip of him and Callum. Let's take a look. What's the difference about other people you're not close to, then, that... that it was a that, close call. So it was a close call. And the fact the matter is... What do you respect the about them, then? What do you respect? It's not respect. It's about you say you respect me. It's about having more conversations. I know more about their backgrounds. But you say you respect me. I do. So what do you know about Gina, then? Tell me about her. We were having a chat today. We were having a chat last night. Tell me about her. I know everything about her, Tell me everything about her. So why does he continue with the interrogations? <laughs> He's just scary, isn't he? And I love the way the camera angle, because it was like we could feel what it must be like to be interrogated <laughs> by Dan. I mean, he, he goes from quite chatty, quite nice, you know, did you eat uh, a cocktail sausage? How many did you eat? And he uses this <laughs> massive... His eye contact is worse than me. I mean, he's obviously scrutinising everything about the body language, which must be quite spooky. And then he uses this broken record technique. He keeps asking the same question. But it's not a big deal, really. It's like, were you friendly with Gina is all he's trying to find yeah. out. I mean, Gina's not some arch villain or anything do like that. Do you think that. he'll drop it? Will he drop the detective down a bit, do you He's think? getting worse. I mean, I think he thinks he's in Cluedo, you know, and I love him, but he's just... <laughs> everything's got to be an interrogation. OK, well, let's take a breather from all the drama and switch things up just a little bit. It's time for some sexy talk with me and Judy, <laughs> not with each other. Uh, but to put it bluntly, Judy, I want to know who's got the horn. <laughs> I just, well, I just didn't see that one coming with Hazel. I mean, Hazel, Hazel and Daly. Hazel and or Haley. Haley, even. Oh, Thanks. I, I mean, 
She was so intimate with, with Dan, and I think the big problem is that part of Dan's problem at the moment, and this is going to cause a big rift in the house, that she's just breezed away from Dan. She's well, we've suddenly seen that tonight. He, it, it, uh, it's quite affecting him, isn't it? Well, it is, because, and, and that's very much her power base. She uses uh, flirting and affection to create power, but then she also has a power through dropping it because you want it back again, and Dan's absolutely devastated. But then suddenly, Daly, who's done nothing apart from body burps, you know, since he's been in there, Suddenly, he, he, he goes and he's doing these secret notes. I know. Where did that come from? I know, and what does it mean? Well, I mean, it, and it, it was intimate because it was, it, he really did check. It wasn't just, oh, I like you, you're my best friend. He was really watching her, you know, really, really when she replied. Okay, and very quickly, I want to get this in because it's something else that you've picked up on. And this is a still of Hazel. <laughs> Let's take a look. That's not Hazel. That's, That's Hazel. <laughs> Uh, OK, so what's going on there? Tell us what her eyes are telling you. This is Hazel's death stare, and it's been unleashed twice so far. I mean, projectile it's, incontinence it's if you're on the Dexter, receiving it. it. It was Dexter, and I think Gina got it as well. Right. And I love it because she's very laid back with her body language, but suddenly she does this, and that would really, really that. scare somebody. And that's really almost <laughs> as frightening. <laughs> I will shut up now. Uh, Judy, I love you. Thank you so much. Thank Judy you. James, everybody. <laughs> TV legend and Diamond making a storming return to our screen. Since then, the phones haven't stopped ringing with responses being so positive that the Big Brother producers have decided to give her her own show. You go, Anne. Welcome to this very special and probably one-off edition of Big Brother's Bit on the Rise with me, Anne Diamond. First up joining me in the studio is the man you need to know if you're a personality, an agent or just a fame whore. Uh, Bit on the side celebrity producer James Skinner. James, welcome to the show. Thank you, Anne. It's wonderful to be here. Right. What criteria do you look for when you're looking for a, a celebrity appearance? Uh, availability, attitude. And affordability, the three A's, oh. or ah, uh, uh, for sure. Ah. Mm. What is it then about Bit on the Side itself that attracts these huge names? Well, our location plays a big part in that. Out on uh, any given day on Bournemouth Boulevard, uh, you can see um, the, 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 the most glittering names in show business uh, eating in Nando's or, uh, or Wimpy. So you can just get them to pop in? We do, we do do that. We leave flyers on the tables. Thanks to James for that exciting insight into the bit on the side celebrity world. And speaking of the glitterati, I'm delighted to say that our very own Mr Showbiz, Rylan Clark, is on standby to give us the very latest showbiz goss. So, Rylan, are you there? Oh, and can I just say, let me just say, you were truly an inspiration on that celebrity fat club. Thank you so much. You are a sweetheart. So, come on then, Rylan, tell us the celebrity news. Um, nothing, Anne. There's, there's absolutely nothing going on. There's, there's nothing written on my cards. There's, there's, there's nothing. Thanks, Rylan, for that insightful news. Um, let's go to Emma now, who I believe is going to give us the Big Brother House weather forecast. Over to you, Emma. Hello? Hello, Anne, yes? You're on air. Uh, oh, OK. Uh, the weather. Uh, this is Emma, and I am bringing you the Big Brother House forecast for today. Uh, there's a cold front moving through the house as Dan is in a very paranoid mood today, which means there's going to be some frosty encounters in the garden. I also predict there's going to be some scorching weather today, as I've been told that Gina is going to be cooking for the very first time in the Big Brother house. So let's have uh, flames, I would imagine, to start with, followed by a fire extinguisher at the ready, just as a precaution. Safety first and all that. Now, it might get a bit hot and sweaty in the bedroom as Charlie and Callum have booked in another massage in the double bed. And that is the forecast for today. Back to you, Anne. Love you. Uh, just about in time now to look at today's papers. The front page of the Boreham Wood there, Gina. Last week's task wasn't the first time I've eaten dog food. And then finally, the Boreham Wood Gazette. I love this story. Jackie destined for strictly stardom. I, for one, can't wait to see that. 
Right, well, that's it for today's edition of Bit on the Rise. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And until I see you next, bye-bye. of a doner kebab, sometimes greasy, always a first choice after a heavy night out, and guaranteed to get you licking your lips. Who doesn't love a meaty kebab, eh? <laughs> Vegetarian. That face says it all. <laughs> uh, OK, so we've talked about the twist. Now let's talk about the mood in the house. Um, Sean, do you feel like there's a lot of people in there that's on a bit of a downer? Well, yeah, it's, it's week three now, isn't it? And, uh, you know, they're, they're probably all getting hungry, missing their luxuries, but they, they, they've, they're having the chance now to do some tasks, aren't they, to sort of yeah. win them back. But they're, they're going a bit half-hearted at some of them. None of them could handle the lemon, which is a, e eating a lemon, could they? Which is amazing. The amount of acid I love lemon. The amount of acid that comes out of their mouth and they couldn't handle it going back in, you know? <laughs> but if they're not careful, they're going to have rations of whatever it is, uh, uh, pulses and... Yeah, split they will. For a week. They will. Then they're all going to have to put their shit shields up. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that brilliant? Yeah. Um, who do you think's being the moodiest? Danny. Everyone's beating up on Dan. He's, Why Dan? Uh, he's just smooth all the time. He, he tries to have a conversation. If he doesn't like the answer, he just goes away in a half like a spot teenager. So. Anybody else? Any, Any other? Any, anyone other than? Huh? Callum's being moody. I think Callum's being moody because well, he was all right. He was being all nicey nicey to everyone, and now since he's been told about you know the two, the mother and the daughter, he's kind of gone in his shell, and now he's like, Ugh, I'm not going to say nothing. Do you think maybe because Dan's got him sussed as well? Dan thinks he's got everyone sussed. I don't think he's got no one sussed. Don't you? That's why he's moody. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone other than Dan and Callum? Wolfie. We Wolfie. Wolfie. <laughs> Very quickly, Wolfie. Um, I just think she's like taking things a bit over dramatic. Like, I think it's because she was such a big character to begin with, like, all the quieter ones are, like, now coming out of their shell, whereas, yeah. like, her and Dan, they, like, as soon as they came into the house, and Gina as well, obviously, like, Gina's first night, she had a, like, yeah. argument with Sally, so, like, they're slowly, like, being brought down. And so that she's trying well. hard to... She, she's, she's finding it hard to keep up there yeah. with everybody else. She's lost herself about Wolfie, I think. The what, what? She's lost herself about Wolfie. She's, she doesn't really know what she's None about at the, the minute, exactly. or who she is, and I think it's getting very hard for her in there. Lauren, how hard is it to keep your spirits up in there? Yeah, OK, I cried every day, right. <laughs> so, moving on, yeah, it, it is hard, and there are some things I wish that I hadn't done. But also, the thing is, you don't see the little bits where they are having fun that aren't good enough to make TV. Like, we did have fun that's not shown, and I think if you just have someone, like, secure in there, someone that you're friends with, like, your spirits will be up like with Adam, friend. but don't give them the wrong, like, you know... Don't leave them on, that's what she's trying to say. I'm not trying to say that. <laughs> don't give so... me the wrong impression. Uh, so, yeah. Now, yesterday, they weren't working very hard in the task. Um, let's see if they did any better today. This is Big Brother. Would three housemates who are on the same wavelength go to the diary room immediately? Which housemate is the most fun? <laughs> Which housemate is the most easily offended? Which housemate is the laziest? Sam often does the washing up, though. I wouldn't have called him lazy. Which housemate is the most self-obsessed? Oh. Which housemate is the most unpleasant? Housemate is the kindest. Oh. Housemates, four of your answers were three of a kind. Therefore, you have failed this oh. part of the task. Damn it. About as much effort went into that as went into today's script, if you ask me. Uh, now, <laughs> last week, uh, they were adamant that they wouldn't fail at the shopping task again after living uh, for two weeks on basic rations. Um, Adam, have they forgotten what's in store for them? They said they were going to work so hard and they weren't going to lose their money and they weren't just going to have chickpeas and lentils, but that is, you know, potentially what's happened. Yeah, I think Are they're they all... losing sight? I, I think they're all just kind of thick, really. I just don't think they're that smart. Adam! Honestly, I'm serious. Like, you know what? 
even in our house, we might have hated almost 50% of the people mm -hmm. in the house, but we still pulled together because you know what? We need to eat, we need cigarettes, and then, you know, it's, a simple, it's really simple things. It's survival, you know what I'm saying? And they were like, so excited yeah. when they got all that meat this week, last week, weren't they? Yeah. And now that's just kind of... Go on, Sean, you don't need to put your hand well, up. Well, as you say, you know, there's, there's people in there with very healthy appetites, you know. I mean, you know Jack and Joe were triplets, but they, they ate the other one. <laughs> That was kind of like a seamless segue. We're going to move on to the twins because I think we can rely on them to cheer the house up a little bit. Take a look at this. You can cut the tension with a knife. Mm. I might find someone like Hazel physically repulsive. Dexter, you were six feet under, you're now ten feet under. <laughs> Call it a night, close your coffin. We're going to have some dramas in here, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> I genuinely don't think I said I was even inside. Hazel, you can be as even inside as you want to be. <laughs> I'm just trying to lighten the mood. <laughs> You were meant to do it back. Mm. <laughs> um, Lauren, what do you think the house would be like without them? Would it function as well? I really don't think it will function as well. I mean, I think they're absolutely hilarious together. Their diary room chats are my pretty much favourite thing about this show. And the other side we saw to Jack or Joe, whoever it was that had the argument with Dan, amazing. Joe. Want to see more of that too, as yeah. well as their funny It was side. great, wasn't he? He just piped really up. Really good. Like, mm. Don't ever talk to me like that. Where did that come <laughs> from? Uh, do you know what? We're going to talk to someone now who knows them very well. It's their dad, David. David, are you there? Hi, I'm indeed, yep. Yeah. Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well, thank you. Good. And how do you think your boys are doing? Are they doing you proud? Oh, yeah, they always do me proud, but they seem to be doing a very good job. Uh, loving it. They really, just being themselves. OK, so... Obviously enjoying it, as you can see. Yeah. And uh, it, I'll say it's just been a pleasure to watch them on there, actually. So what we're seeing, is that what they're like at home? Yes, if anything, we're a little bit louder at home. Yes, in a confined space, they're used to it. But, uh, yeah, that's exactly what they're like. But they bounce off each other all the time. Yeah. Full of one-liners. When they bicker, they bicker. Oh, well, they uh, certainly do. Yes, when they fall out, they can fall out. But 95% of the time, they get on. Literally okay. like a house on fire. OK, well, uh, as we've just mentioned, uh, we wanted to ask you about it as well. We saw Joe really put Dan in his place the other day. Um, do yeah. you think the house is maybe slightly underestimating them? Yes, indeed. I say they both got very strong personalities. Jeff's is more outgoing, yeah. but Joe's is stronger. And if Joe doesn't like something or somebody says something that he doesn't agree with, as you saw, he will definitely tell him. And uh, he doesn't like, or he won't be talked down to by anybody, no matter how old they are or what type of background they've got. He's well capable of looking after himself. So do you think we'll see more of that? Uh, there's a very good chance, I should think, yeah. yeah as, as it goes on, the longer they stay in, obviously, tempers will get frayed, different things will be said. And uh, we might well see more of that. But they'll still be the safe underneath. They'll forget it. They'll have a quick word about something. Yeah. They might fall out with someone, but then they'll move on to the next day and it'll all be forgotten and they'll just go back to being themselves. Uh, David, thanks so much for being with us tonight. No, no problem at all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm with Hazel on this one. David is a stud. <laughs> uh, oh, what's that little birdie? An exclusive, you say? How wonderful. Eat your heart out, Wolfie. What, don't you like that? Tell me. Still feels like the line. The line, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still sort of see the line. Change I think it. I might have to take this one off and take that little bit a bit shorter to blend oh, yeah. it there. Have I ruined it? No, you ain't ruined it, but I do still feel like I can see a line. Where? Where's that other mirror? Can you see a line, Gina? Like on the side. Kind of. Yeah, kind of. It's not. It's only really... <sighs> Maybe just go over I'll it again. I'll do it a little bit more, yeah, yeah, yeah but I was yeah. going to touch it up at the end anyway. At least it will grow out for a couple of days by Friday night anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. You're going to do it on the back bit as well? Yeah, yeah. if you want, I yeah. Th I think a little bit, yeah, just to what, cover the seat. What, all the way, not here though, no? Don't think so, but let's try, like, just to do the back, because I, yeah. I just felt like it, the back looks a bit, like... Just be careful going right, right to the top, obviously, yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah. not to my crown, like... Hmm. What do you think? Do you think it's done? I think it's all right. I think it looks lovely. Uh, right, it's time for that part of the show again where you get to tell me what you think about Big Brother this year. Uh, don't worry about sh sugarcoating anything because I can take a bitch. Um, OK, so let's see <laughs> who we've got first. We've got Jackie from Walkden. Hello, Jackie. Hello, gorgeous Emma. You OK? Oh, I'm good, gorgeous. How are you? <laughs> can I just say I'm absolutely loving this. Isn't it's it amazing? It's got to be 
Dan and Warfare. What, into the, the two... secret safe house? It has, yes, Emma. The two people that don't get on, can you imagine them two in the same room? It's it either going to be fireworks or definitely. they're going to make up and be Katie busy. Katy Perry style fireworks. Oh, at, at least <laughs> they'll just... be fabulous fireworks. Oh, yes, definitely. Can I just say, can you imagine Dan going back into the house the way he stomps about? It's a good job. It's, it's a not, not a cross-dresser who wears heels. You'd have holes in your floor. <laughs> 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 you've so let me no speechless. <laughs> um, that's a very good point. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. I think we're going to move on. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, who's up next? <laughs> Richard from West Bromwich. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Richard. Oh, you're a West Brom boy. Yeah, I am a West Brom boy. All right, Bab. All right, Bab. How are you? Bab. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to talk about, Richard? Hang on one sec. Uh, did you, I want to did talk you just about... put me on hold? What? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, OK. It's OK, I took a speakerphone. Oh, OK. <laughs> can we stick? Come on then, Richard. Right, can we stick Dexter and Gina in? Dexter and Gina, why? Well, yeah, like the lady said before, I don't want to see Dan stomping around the house again. He's had enough twists and turns as it is. Um, because I think Dexter and Gina are brilliant together. They'll plot and twist, won't they? They will plot and twist, and I think they've probably got the best minds to cause the, mo <clears throat> the most mayhem. Right. So, uh, so OK, Real Faces on the television is like a bad Chinese movie at the moment. You're not lip-synced. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, am I out of sync? Yeah, I'm gonna, I can't watch the telly, no, it's really bad. So I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to look. My mate's written all the names down for me as well. Dan, I think, is very infantile. Yeah. And, and <laughs> lovely. I think Cal... Um, who is it? Charlie? Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> when she was described as vanilla, I have to agree. No, that was Hazel. Oh, that was Hazel, wasn't it? Yeah. Hazel. I do have to agree. She's a beautiful lady, but I think she's very fickle. All right, all right, Bab, listen, we've got to give someone else a chance, so thanks for phoning. Thank you. Speak thanks. to you Good soon. Night. Bye. Bye. Who we got next? It's Jay from Manchester. All right, Jay. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? I'm OK. Not too bad. I'm going to say what I'm going to say, but after I've said it, can I say a few hellos to a few people that I know? Uh, well, it depends. They might just put the phone down on you, but let's get the big brother oh, chat out of the way don't first. don't do that, yeah. I'd like uh, Gina and Dexter... Yeah? Uh, ..to go to the posh house. Why so? ..basically, because I think that they're the strongest characters within the house... Yeah. ..and they are assertive and direct, so when they come out... Yeah. ..they're going to give everybody a bad time, and they're going to do it in such style, really nicely... Yeah. ..but be very assertive and di um, direct. But yeah. basically, they're going to ruin everyone's ambience, and they're going to turn everyone, because it is, everyone is quite all about themselves and love themselves, yeah. and basically... Uh, quite dysfunctional in some ways. They're going to ruin their dysfunctional characters and okay. they're going to have a problem in organising their disorganised dysfunctionality. OK, Jay, thank you so much for all of that. I'm, I'm so sorry. Hello. But we're, we're out of time. I'm so sorry. Oh, Try and call again. Thank you. Um, okay. Right, OK. Good things come to those who wait. You just remember that, Jay. Uh, and I reckon you've got about four minutes before I serve up some more exclusive gossip. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to Big Brother's Bit on the Side. Uh, oh, oh, my God. Oh, I feel your pain, Wolfie. If I stand up one more time and feel gunge in my vagina, I'm going to go crazy too. <laughs> TMI? <laughs> I thought so too. Here's today's news. <laughs> At 6.55 this morning, Jack and Joe had an argument. I just said, I'll go under first, inside you. No, I'm first. I said I was going in well, first. No, it first. They don't close that No. Yes. 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 No. Jack, get off me. No, you're not. Lay your fingers off Stop me. It. Stop it. Stop touching me. Stop pestering me to turn the wheel. You're being rude, Joe. Turn the wheel. <laughs> what? My lad's not rude. Oh, you're being rude. Turn the wheel. You're being ridiculous. Just turn the wheel. Put your shirt back on. Shove that over your head. Well, let me get my shirt then. Where is it? Clear. Fine, that's fine. Put it on. 
<coughs> oh, I'm gonna be two minutes at a push. Well, please. Then you'll scrub your belly, but you think it's appropriate? I've got a ball patch, bitch. Yeah, Joe's the one with the ball patch, bitch. Um, at 12.29 today, whispers of Hazel and Daly's pending romance began to spread through the house. Do you feel it's more one person than the other, or both, or, or what? Both, but maybe one a bit more. Which one? <laughs> I don't want to say. OK. I don't know, I'm just picking up on a bit of an attraction there from yeah. her point of view. I yeah, don't know, though. Definitely. It might be wrong. Could be wrong, yeah. I haven't spoken to her about it either. But I'm kind of sensing it a bit more. Yeah. Do you, do you think yeah. that as well? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's more to do to it than just yeah. kind of being friendly. I tried to say last time when I brought it up to if there's something that you can't help it and stuff, it's fine. Did you mention that to her Leave as well? Leave it to or? the outside world. It's more that like maybe she needs to be a bit careful mm. then, in that sense. Oh. But we'll see. Mm, we'll just wait and see. Ooh, we stand jealous that his former bestie has moved on and will Charlie take her place? At 3.35 this afternoon, Hazel and Daly realised that all eyes were on them. I feel like I can't speak to you again today without creeping around and, like... Yeah, but that's stupid. Man. I know, I know. So it was nice knowing you. I'm sure we'll pass each other in passing. <laughs> People are obviously speculating you and Daly on each other on, on your own all the time. That's stupid, again. though, because yeah. me and you, we ain't even touched each I other know. in that kind of way. I know. Like I mean, anyone like, else. you or, like, you haven't been stroking my legs or... <laughs> I don't know whether you're more the issue. Me? Yeah, yeah I think that particular person might have an issue with it because that person might like you. That's stupid. In a bit, I'm going treehouse, and I just chill out and away from for a bit. Yeah. Good thinking. I'm going to hide in the vegetable patch. <laughs> hmm. I'll go hide in the vegetable patch. Is that their next rendezvous point? And finally, at 6.11, the knives were out for Gina. Spin the wheel. <laughs> oh, Wait, I can't hold on! I can't hold on! I've actually got it around! Hold on tight! Five, four, four three, three, two... Oh, no. two. Efforts help the housemates win this week's shopping task. Tune into the main show tomorrow at 10 pm. That is today's news. So, Ian, number two, what you That's got me. for us, darling? Just to be super duper 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 clear on what's happening this Friday, okay? Yeah. Basically, the two, because there's some confusion online, basically. Yes. The two housemates who you want to say, um, do you want to evict? I say in speech marks because I'm not just getting evicted. So it's the two housemates you want to send into the safe house. Exactly. Yeah. And it's as a couple, Gina and Dexter, or Dan and Wolfie. And the reason why they're as a couple is because Gina and Dexter got the most votes and Dan and Wolfie got the least amount of votes yeah. from the nominations. Um, so just, well, there's no conspiracy theories, there's no crazy stuff going on, there's no fixes, it's just the ranking order of the nominations. I can't imagine there's anybody online thinking that there's a conspiracy theory or that it's fixed. I know, I can't, I, I know. I not think anybody would do that for a second. Exactly. Exactly, what else you got? Uh, we've got some tweets, we've got some mixed reactions on what's happening this Friday. Yeah. Um, We've got Darth Hawkins, Big Brother is never a letdown, OMG, loads of exclamation marks. So excited for Friday's programme now. Me too. Um, we've also got a bad one here. Abigail says, oh. come on, this has been done to death by now. The secret house, boring, snooze, was hoping for something juicy. Juicy. This I, is going to create juice. This is juice. This is Big Brother. Expect yeah. the unexpected, unexpect come the expected. On. Uh, thank you very much. That's all we've got time for. Um, huge thanks to all of my guests. Join me tomorrow uh, when Otis Dealey, Patrick Morris and Kim Woodburn will be here and everyone's favourite gladiator, Diane Udell, will be dropping by. Have a great night.